So hello, everyone. I am Ilya. I work uh, in Juno. Juno is a small ride-hailing company operating only in New York. So has anyone heard of it or maybe used it? Oh, cool. Three persons. <laughs> so Juno is a small company. So we don't have ma much money to use Google or something. And we try to use OpenStreetMap as much as possible. And uh, we use it for virtually everything, for geocoding, for route planning, for research, I don't know, for extracting data from OpenStreetMap. And when you use OSM for business purposes, then you expect it to be, well, perfect. Do you expect it not to have any errors that might uh, create troubles for your business? But as you well know, OpenStreetMap isn't. It always has some errors. It is constantly broken. It misses lots of stuff. So to use it in commercial applications, you constantly need to fix it. Companies, big companies usually hire a lot of mappers uh, whose sole task is fixing OpenStreetMap. You know, lots of examples, Mapbox, Lyft, Microsoft, they all have lots of mappers. But Juno is very small. Our entire mapping team is basically two people. <laughs> so we don't have time to fix all of New York errors just by ourselves because we do lots of stuff. We re develop uh, stuff, we well map a bit, uh, research, do researches, uh, create APIs for other departments. So we decided to do what uh, uh, we could do best uh, to automate, automate fixing OpenStreetMap. And what do you need to automatically find issues with, uh, with the map? First, you need sources. And which sources did we have for the entire of New York? Well, we are a ride-hailing company, which means we have thousands of drivers roaming around the New York City night and day, and all of them are sending their locations back, which form GPS traces. So we have millions of GPS traces, which are very recent. We get locations uh, the moment drivers pass each point. And we thought maybe we could use them. They look a bit like this. They're not very precise, but at least uh, they're truthful. We can, uh, you know, New York has a lot of uh, high-rise buildings, so signal reception is not very great. But uh, there is an app for that. Uh, there is an algorithm called map matching. Uh, many routing engines can do it, uh, including the popular OSRM, OSRM engine. And what it does is basically finds street segments on a map that uh, the driver presumably took to drive uh, along the road. And it does a great job. It, uh, from a very uh, wiggly track, it produces very clean uh, geometry that you could use. But if the map isn't perfect, if there are some gaps, if there are some wrong attributes, then the match track, uh, uh, starts to loop around to diverge from the original track, and that is what we are looking for. When the matched track uh, differs from the original one, that means that there is an error in OpenStreetMap, most likely. So that's we, why, how we made uh, our graph validator uh, internal tool. Uh, it basically takes all the GPS traces from the previous day and matches them to the recent OpenStreetMap data. And we look at uh, issues with matching to find errors with OpenStreetMap. And then cross-reference uh, these with different sources. We have seen lots of different errors. Mostly it's uh, missing segments or uh, wrong turn restrictions or wrong 
one-way attribute, for example, in wrong direction. Uh, sometimes uh, signal reception is not too good, uh, or a driver just decides to make a U-turn uh, at some arbitrary point. So fixing these errors is usually simple when you have research. Uh, mostly we fix one-way directions or remove them altogether if a street looks uh, like bidirectional. Or fix turn restrictions. Again, either remove them because they're obsolete or make it into conditional restrictions, which means they're active not the 24 hours, but just part of the day. Uh, we have had some quite notable errors, uh, issues with the map. The one I remember well happened almost uh, a year ago uh, in uh, central Manhattan near the Central Park. Uh, you see the West 60th Street. Uh, at one point, we have got more than 100 matching errors with it. And it turned out that somebody has reversed it uh, to go well, right. So I started researching and opened all the imagery layers and find, found out that uh, the cars are all looking right, like the edit set. Opens uh, street view, mapillary imagery, and uh, saw that cars are also looking in that direction. So it looks like the edit was correct. But uh, still, I that means that 120 drivers just decided to go in the wrong direction one way street. <laughs> so I opened Google and found out that two months prior, Department of Transport has reversed the direction of the road, which confused a lot of drivers. And the editor that made the change, despite also being from right hailing company, didn't have the data to confirm the direction of the street. Because every imagery layer, every street view source, like my pillory, open street cam, all had all, all data. And when I saw that, uh, the first thing in my head was, uh, can I fix that? <laughs> because I have this great uh, source of information and First thing I wanted to do is to share it to not see similar mistakes in the future. So how do you share uh, such data, data from uh, drivers and riders? It's very sensitive data. Uh, OpenStreetMap uh, has a very big uh, collection of GPS traces. Uh, some of you ha might have seen it in the form of GPX tiles. Uh, it can be enabled in any editor, and the color means direction of travel. So, Opposite Map started as a collection of GPS traces. Uh, 15 years ago, all it had was GPX traces and Landsat imagery. But nowadays, uploading GPX traces to OpenStreetMap is very hard. People stop doing it, because you have to know how to record one, to transfer it to a computer, uh, to find a button to upload GPX trace, to choose uh, from obs obscure list of privacy settings, and then wait until the layer gets updated. Uh, very few people do that. So Manhattan around 60th Street looks like this is all in opposite map layer. Just a few wiggly lines which you cannot use for mapping. And they are many years old. So I decided to publish our traces. And the first thing you need to think about, obviously, is privacy. Uh, I spent a lot of time inventing ways to anonymize the traces. Uh, one of the most important things is uh, we cut uh, random parts from beginnings and ends of each track. And also, we uh, put them all on raster tiles. So you cannot uh, separate them in individual tracks. So that's what we've got for the same area. And you can clearly see uh, directions of streets and how many cars travel. But you cannot, of course, uh, extract uh, separate tracks. So this is our layer. It covers the whole of New York. And the great thing about it, it uh, 
is uh, these are tracks just for single day. So all this layer is never more than one day old. So if something changes in New York, like street gets reversed or some construction road gets opened, you can open the, this layer and check that drivers are actually using the road. Uh, there is no link, but uh, this layer has been available, available in all the editors for half a year now. Just uh, look for Juno GPS styles or tracks, I don't know. You know. So uh, we have published this layer and well, we didn't expect that uh, New York road network will automatically be fixed after that because uh, if uh, publishing a source means uh, improvements to the map, then we would have much better mapped cities in Africa, for example. And we're still just two people in June, two mappers. And we were getting like hundreds of errors every day. So we couldn't fix the map ourselves. We had to ask the community. And how do you do that? Actually, there is a tool, uh, thanks to Martin. Uh, there is uh, MapRoulette, which simplifies uh, taking on big projects. Its main idea is that uh, you separate split a big project into very small tasks that take like uh, half a minute to solve. You don't think of a project as a big, ta big thing ahead. You just solve one or two tasks. Somebody else does a couple more. And before you know it, in a week or two, your project is done. But again, if you pub just publish, if you just dump all your data into MapRoulette, then uh, it might be too hard, too obscure uh, to solve, so you have to prepare. So we improved MapRoulette uh, to style things uh, because, you know, finding number of lanes or gaps in the road uh, is pretty easy, but uh, researching matching issues is not. Then I took uh, a million tracks from our database, matched them to most recent OpenStreetMap data, uh, took the most prominent errors, uh, which affected five or more rides, and from that created uh, several hun hundred MapRoulette <coughs> tasks, which uh, I published uh, to the MapRoulette. And after announcing these uh, in a Slack channel, uh, the community immediately took to solve fixing these tasks, and in a few weeks, uh, they have been solved. And we have immediately noticed that in our validator output, because we get reports every day. Before that, we got like uh, several hundred errors a day. And after that, uh, uh, basically just two rides in a thousand reported some matching errors. And mostly these were because of uh, weird U-turns and GPS signal. So New York road network is pretty great for map matching. As I was saying, fixing errors mostly boiled down to uh, removing or reversing one-way restrictions and removing or making more complex uh, turn restrictions. Which means that if map of New York didn't have any one-way attributes and didn't have any turn restrictions, then our validator would have nothing to complain about. And that doesn't look very right. So recently I've returned to uh, looking at uh, our GPS tile map and to think what else can we get from it. For example, if you have a ro road segment and you see that 100 cars moved uh, in one direction and zero cars moved in another, then most likely uh, this segment is one way. The same with turn restrictions, the same with uh, speed limits or highway classification. Uh, and I'll be grateful for, for any other ideas. So there is still room to change. and. Uh, we have started to improve validator to find other issues with New York City road network.
which might lead to some more MapRuet projects for the community to solve. And with that, we might get a really great, near-perfect roadmap in New York. But New York is just one city. Uh, and the United States is so much more than that. So that's where you come in. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that at least some of you sit on very big amounts of data, not uh, particularly GPS data, but maybe some uh, points of interest, some uh, I don't know, road conflation data, anything. And you might not know that the data is useful or you might not know how to apply it to OpenStreetMap to improve it. But uh, I would be really glad if uh, I could help you improve OpenStreetMap with the data. So just come and talk to me if you do. Thank you.